everyone. Good evening. I'm Shreya Dhondial. As always, it is good to see you. In November 2020, that is last year, Bangalore's crime branch arrested a 26-year-old hacker called Sri Krishna Ramesh in a narcotics case. Sriki, as he was called, was accused of procuring drugs using bitcoins via the darknet and peddling it to his high-profile clients. Further investigations revealed that Sri Krishna was a hacker who had indulged in many other cyber crimes like ransomware attacks, hacking into Bitcoin exchanges, looting cryptocurrency, money laundering and cyber frauds. Even worse, he had siphoned off 11 crore rupees from the Karnataka government without them having a whiff of it. Now, the story gets even more interesting when 31 Bitcoins worth some 9 crore rupees that were seized by the Bangalore police suddenly disappeared. The political war is on in the state. The Congress says the scam is way bigger and involves 5,000 bitcoins worth some 200 crore rupees. The might of cryptocurrency is only growing. 160 million people use it around the world. The maximum 10 crore right here in India. This month, it hit a market cap of $3 trillion on November 9th. The government, which so far wanted to ban cryptocurrency in India, has changed its mind and now wants to regulate it instead. If you can regulate it, means you can tax it. But, and there is a big but, the RBI, the guardian of India's financial system, has flagged off some very major concerns. What are these concerns? Is crypto vulnerable to scams? Is crypto even legal in India? And who is the mystery man who started or who's the pioneer of cryptocurrency? That's Bitcoin. That is your debrief this evening. Let's start with that basic question. What is cryptocurrency? They say that New York is a city that never sleeps. The same can be said about the world of crypto as well. A space that is constantly changing, it's constantly volatile, yet has the eyes of everyone on it. So is it the future or is it some fraud in the making? But first, let's step back a little. Let's understand what are cryptocurrencies and why they were created. Crypto, by the basic definition, is a digital currency that you can buy, sell, exchange directly without an intermediary like a bank. Now there are two routes to trade cryptos, speculating their prices. Here you can use CFDS, which is contact for difference trading, or you can buy the digital currency in the hope they increase their value. Now to trade cryptocurrencies, you need to open a crypto wallet and an account with a crypto exchange. Bitcoin, one of the most popular cryptos, was launched in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto, whose identity remains anonymous till date. Currently, there are 106 million people using cryptos all over the world. So what's really fueling this rally? Now what's fueling the current crypto craze is a combination of an ambivalent regulatory environment, a global bubble and low or no barriers to entry. The cherry on the cake though is a smartphone boom and cheap data availability. The crypto market is largely driven by two factors, speculation or a trend. Let me give you an example. Dogecoin, which is now a cryptocurrency with over $85 billion market capitalization, started off as a meme. Yes, that's correct. Two software engineers, Billy Marcus and Jackson Palmer, created a meme making fun of the fact that people will invest in just about anything. And that's exactly what happened. But they weren't alone. Elon Musk, the world's richest person, has put what is now being called meme numerology into Bitcoin strategies. The cryptocurrency market hit a $3 trillion market cap on the 9th of November this year, with Bitcoin and Ethereum hitting all-time highs. But that's the reality of cryptocurrency. With the highs come the lows. On the 10th of November, Bitcoin fell to $60,350, falling from a record high of $69,000. Ethereum, the second biggest cryptocurrency, also fell by 4.5%. But today, the world is looking beyond Bitcoin, as newer players are teasing investors with cheaper transactions and higher returns. 
These new players are dubbed altcoins or alternative coins. Ethereum is the biggest altcoin. There are about 5,000 others like Solana, Ripple, Polkadot, Dogecoin, Terra and many others. Whatever you may call it, a fad, a trend or a fraud, the reality is that crypto is here to stay. Ridhima Bhatnagar for CNN News 18. Now, if crypto is here to stay, might as well cash into it. That is exactly what the government of India has changed its mind about cryptocurrency from wanting to ban it to now regulate it. But the RBI isn't exactly impressed with the crypto and has sounded off serious warnings against it, saying it can cause serious financial instability in the country. It's this whopping 50 crores ad which has put the government on high alert. With the crypto craze taking the country by storm, the government has to decide, cash in or stay a chokidar. But as indications arise of the government taking a sharp right in its previous stand on Bitcoin and its counterparts, the RBI has already flagged off its concerns by saying that the growing popularity of cryptocurrency must be checked at all costs. RBI Governor Shakti Das said, and I quote, There are deeper issues which need much deeper discussions. I'm yet to see serious, well-informed discussion in the public space, unquote. A concern was raised in the Parliamentary Committee of Finance on cryptocurrency, as well as with members of parliament and crypto experts, conceding that this is an issue which can no longer be ignored, but has to be controlled. We have to make sure uh, that this is not used for illicit finance, uh, for terrorism financing, for mm. criminal financing, and that all the money laundering and compliance requirements are fully met. So there are many challenges when new technologies mm. like this come up. And it's very important that even as we yeah. uh, get excited about what's possible, we understand what the risks are as well. So here is what the government plans. It will not ban, but will instead regulate crypto. It's looking at the possibility of a watchdog monitoring mechanisms for crypto along the lines of RBI. This body looks to treat cryptocurrency as a commodity, but taxation remains a sticking point. The government wants earnings from crypto to be taxed, but ensuring a lack of tax fraud remains a challenge. The bill may pass on the ultimate risk to the consumer, like with mutual funds. But at the same time, it can't turn away from crypto being used as a threat to national security. Crypto firms want a law as they feel it would give the currency a formal recognition. The crypto industry is fast growing and brings big money. And the government wants a piece of the pie as well. As cryptocurrency gains currency, it's a reality which the government has come to accept. And which is why post the Prime Minister's meeting on this particular issue, there has been a tweaking on the bill which was almost ready. From restrictions to regulations and to accept the fact that there is a large section of the Indian population who actually want to go for it. So we can expect this bill to come up in the winter session of Parliament, but with sweeping changes from where it began from. In New Delhi, Pallavi Kosh. Okay, at this point, let us just pause and see where all cryptocurrency is legal and where all it isn't. Let's start with India here. Of course, there is no regulation, uh, at least as of now. In the winter session, we may see a regulation. Let's wait and watch. For the moment, there is legal ambiguity. The United States of America, it welcomes Bitcoin payments. In fact, there are many companies in the US that are offering Bitcoin salaries to its employees if they so wish it. In UK, it's under some sort of tax regulation. In India, that entire question is happening. If you regulate it, can you put it, can you tax it? So there are some issues that need to be sorted out on that front. But in the UK, you can do it. In Australia, it's an asset for capital gains tax, which means it can be taxed. Interestingly, uh, let's uh, move on to Germany now. It's legal, completely legal, but it is taxed differently. So the taxation process uh, and the figures are different for, for Bitcoin and for cryptocurrency in Germany. In Canada, it's treated as business income. Now, uh, there are other countries as well. China, there's a complete ban on all crypto exchanges. There is one country in the world, though, where cryptocurrency is 
absolutely illegal. Uh, in El Salvador, it's the only nation in the world where cryptocurrency is a legal tender, which means it's completely legal. Let me go across to Kanish Gaur. He is the founder of India Futures Foundation to understand uh, what exactly are these concerns that are that we are talking about as far as cryptocurrency is concerned. Kanish Gaur, you know, for people who don't know cryptocurrency, who don't know what Bitcoin is, I want to ask you why the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, which is the guardian of India's financial system, why is it so skeptical on cryptocurrency? What are its concerns? So uh, there are major concerns primarily around financial frauds, taxation, mm -hmm. uh, money laundering. Mm -hmm. We see in India, very few people are interested in paying their full taxes. Mm -hmm. So the biggest issue is when somebody is converting their money to a cryptocurrency, it's very difficult to identify what kind of tax is going to apply. Mm. And a lot of times people use this for money laundering, mm. for illicit trade of drugs, uh, for trafficking, uh, for movement of weapons. Mm. So these are some of the biggest concerns. The other concerns are around national security. Mm. So if you look at the current scenario in India, there is a lot of uh, anti-national activity, terrorist activity which happens. Mm. And most of these payments happen earlier used to happen through Havala channels, now happen through cryptocurrencies. Mm. So the government concern, the RBA concerns are genuine. Mm. The other part is when demonetization happened in India, a lot of people uh, started investing in cryptocurrencies mm. uh, and it was very difficult to identify you know, how much money was laundered from India. Mm. And finding out who owns what kind of amount what should be the tax rate that should be applicable on people? That's that's those are some of the issues which we find out. You will also see that people who have been investing in cryptocurrencies are moving to a concept called as ICO, which is initial coin offering. Like in India, you have IPOs, initial public offerings for uh, companies for a cryptocurrency. You can launch their own coin offerings in certain parts of the globe, and other people can invest in that. The biggest issue with ICOs is the day they get launched, the next day a lot of them have got hacked. Means people who have invested in cryptocurrencies have lost millions of dollars in just investing it because the mechanism is not safe or secure. So the safety and security around ICO and also cryptocurrencies is a big concern. Okay. There's, so another, big issue. There's another big issue mm -hmm. is finding out the identity of the person owning the cryptocurrencies because majority of the crypto cryptocurrency trades happen through encryption channels, mm. happen on dark web, where it is difficult to find out who is there on the other side. Mm. In the recently concluded World Cup, we saw Bitcoin advertisements everywhere. There is one estimate uh, that the ad spent by exchanges, uh, crypto, uh, uh, crypto exchanges, was somewhere around 50 crore rupees. The concern within the government is that these adver advertisements are possibly over promising things to customers tell me if if i'm i'm you know i i i've suddenly been introduced to the bitcoin craze and uh, or the crypto craze and i want to start investing what are the things i should know what are the things i should keep in mind so i think uh, very important for you to keep in mind is the company or the trade channels through which you are investing in bitcoins mm is a legal entity in India. The biggest issue which you will face is you will get so much of marketing, you will find it difficult to identify whether you are investing with the right partner, your money in the cryptocurrency because they will allow you to create a crypto wallet. Mm. And through this, you will be able to make transactions or even trade. Mm. Uh, so there is this coin, if you've heard about Binance coin, the mm. Binance coin is one of the most successful coins. And you have the Binance, uh, wallet which a lot of people use but there is so much amount of marketing which is led to people investing in any kind of crypto mm. contracts which come to them mm. so people find it difficult to identify which contracts or which tenders of crypto are real or which are frauds mm. this is one of the biggest scams which is happening in india mm. so the government's intention of completely banning cryptocurrency has created more chaos in the market today mm. so if you are a user you through your bank account, move to 
a cryptocurrency in a crypto wallet and then you trade uh, very important for you to identify those partners so today what we have seen is that lot of crypto uh, crypto providers in india such as vatir or dcx all of them have formed a consortium and they have tried to tell the world that they are trying to do this in a legal manner but what is lacking today is primarily a regulation which clearly identifies which are the companies who have the right to have crypto trade trading crypto exchanges exchange and also crypto wallets mm-hmm. if government comes out with a regulation it makes it so much easier mm-hmm. that we make trust with the users that they are able to identify companies like rbi has listed companies which are banks mm-hmm. you have other companies similarly you could have crypto companies or crypto exchanges mm-hmm. which are clearly identified so tomorrow if somebody is investing in mm-hmm. they know that this is the company if something bad happens there is also a liability there is a penalty on that company and that company can be publicly identified so this is one of the biggest issues which we face today okay and typically who's the crypto investor right now is it a big investor is it a small investor i'm talking about india and is it the young or are people of all age groups investing in cryptocurrency see uh, there are people of all age groups you have people who have large amount of money and they have people investing their money in stock markets in futures they have been investing money so they have their money is today also getting invested in lot of cryptocurrencies mm-hmm. i mentioned to you about the initial coin offering mm-hmm. there are indians who are invested in initial coin offerings of coins which are not indian but outside so there is a large population of india who are millionaires billionaires who have invested in cryptocurrencies hmm. similarly there are you know youngsters instead of investing their money in stock markets they would prefer investing that money in a cryptocurrency and this these apps which have come the smart apps which have come have made it so much simpler so earlier you were required to go to a dark web use a tor browser and then buy or sell bitcoins but these exchanges this platforms which have come in have made it so much easier to you for you to do the secure transaction okay. so i would say that everybody across different age groups mm. particularly the youth mm. uh, and the younger lot are today investing in cryptocurrencies mm. because they find it easier to invest mm. in cryptocurrencies in virtual currencies mm. than investing mm. in buying gold or jewelry which are hard to maintain or you require lockers to keep them okay kanish thank you very much i think that is good advice uh, even if you want to invest in bitcoins or cryptocurrency uh, read up uh, know what you are doing and only invest then kanish we leave it there for the moment thank you very much for joining us a quick break there's uh, more coming up on the other side do stay with us as india makes up its mind on what it needs to do with cryptocurrency does it need to ban it or regulate it all over the world big businesses are already paying their employees in bitcoin here's what's happening across the world this is secure holdings llc it gives its employees an option of getting paid via bitcoin it's a company based in the us asta solutions it is based in australia in melbourne again it gives employees an option of getting paid via bitcoin and there are companies like this all over the world gmo uh, which is an internet group it is based out of japan it's already paying salaries partly not the entire salary but a part of the salary via bitcoins since february 2018 and they aren't the only ones coinbase slash bitpay of course workers already getting paid in bitcoin that's an obvious one uh, and then there are more as well uh, you have sacramento kings which is now thinking of offering players and staff a bitcoin payment option so in case they want to opt for it that is something that can be done in twitter all of us know twitter well uh, it is talking about exploring the use of bitcoin for its payroll which means can it pay its employees via bitcoin that is something that twitter is seriously considering now as we talk of bitcoin and as we talk of cryptocurrency in a world where the attention span is very short the next big thing is already here and this next big thing is called what it's called nft what is nfts these are non fungible tokens these are digital assets that can be bought and sold like normal assets what makes them unique well each nft is recorded on a blockchain this ensures the unique nature of this token how do they work well they link ownership to digital or physical goods music art film etc they can all be tokenized that's the world we have come to 
And how are they faring? How are they doing? Well, NFTs are growing exponentially since 2021. It had a total value of $250 billion in 2020. Why are they so popular? Well, they're extremely lucrative for artists and musicians to facilitate easy sale of art through royalty. If you're confused, there's so much on it. There is so much literature on it on the net. I suggest you go and look it up there. There's also a lot on our website, news18.com. In any case, we are putting this entire show on our YouTube channel as well. So do revisit it if you want some more clarity on cryptocurrency and what you should be or, or what you should be doing about it or thinking about it. Well, that it's a wrap from me, but you can read an exclusive interview of Lata Mangeshkar on firstpost.com where she is saying, I doubt my legacy will matter as much to future generations in this era of instant gratification. Uh, interesting interview. Do log on. With that, it's a wrap from me. Thanks for watching.